Hello everyone, Camilla here from Decodable Readers Australia. Today we're going to answer a very common question of what readers or books do I need in my classroom when teaching students to read? Now, in order to answer a question like this, we need to thoroughly understand the reading process. So today, I'm going to whet the appetite and show you a theoretical model that you may or may not have seen called the Reading Rope. It was created by Dr. Scarborough in 2001 and still holds so much validity in our classrooms today when implementing the science of reading. The skills outlined in the Reading Rope are all underpinned by this large body of research. So today we're going to have a look and start to unravel the reading rope because when we understand the skills that students need to be able to become a skilled reader, we certainly will then know and understand what readers are best to help them along their journey to become skilled readers. So firstly, let's dive in and have a look at this theoretical model. Scarborough uses a rope as the analogy. As we know, a rope is made of many strands interwoven to become something tight and strong. And in this analogy, that tight and strong refers to skilled reading, the fluent execution and coordination of language comprehension and word recognition. So as we start to detangle the rope, we know that there's two components. The first component is language comprehension and the second component is word decoding. As we dig a little bit deeper, we will understand that there's actually individual skills that makes competent language comprehension. Those skills include background knowledge, which are the facts and concepts of topics. So what we want to do is really build a vast knowledge of lots of different facts and concepts. The next one is vocabulary. That's understanding words and how those words work, knowing that some words even have multiple meanings in different contexts. Then we have language structures. This is really the understanding of grammar and those rules around grammar, syntax and sentence structure, even being able to unpack a sentence knowing what is the subject and predicate, what is the subject and what is that subject doing to really understand how sentences are created. That way when we read them, it's building the knowledge behind what the sentence is telling us. We then have verbal reasoning. This is about being able to inference and understand things like metaphors, knowing that you can read a little bit of information, apply that with your background knowledge and your prior knowledge to get a new understanding. Then we have literacy knowledge. This is understanding how a book or text is organized. It might be about the differences between fiction and nonfiction and the types of writing that we can read like genres and their purposes. Then we have word decoding. Now we have three parts in our word decoding. We have our phonological awareness. That's that big overarching umbrella of words being broken up into their individual sounds or sound units like syllables, having two parts, three parts to a word like computer is our syllables, and then digging further down at phoneme level. That's individual sounds. So for example, the word sat has three phonemes, s -at, and I can manipulate those sounds and change at to it to make sit, s it. And that's what we call phonemic awareness, a, a very essential skill for the next process, which is decoding. Now, decoding uses that sound and connects it to a letter that is going to represent that sound. So that's that letter sound knowledge, or we call it our alphabetic principle. Now, we use those letter sound knowledge to decode the words. That's blending those sounds together to read words. As we do this um, over and over through cumulative practice, we get to a point where we have sight recognition, not to be confused with sight words. We want all words to eventually become sight recognition. What that means is that our brain has orthographically mapped those words. We've seen those words so many times through practice that our brain recognizes those strings of letters, puts those sounds together, and is able to recognize the word by sight. 
Now that we understand that there's two parts of the reading rope, over time we need to increase in their strategies to be able to use language comprehension as well as increase the automaticity of decoding and sight recognition to then have skilled reading. And this, as I said, takes time. When we understand that there's two parts of the reading rope, we can now start to bring in resources that match each part, rather than trying to pick resources that are going to cover both. The reason being language comprehension is usually further developed than word decoding in the first few years of school. So what we need in our language comprehension are texts that the teacher can read to be able to foster the development of those different and individual strands. So the types of texts to use are authentic texts, fiction and non-fiction, that are going to build background knowledge. They're going to expose and teach students new and complex vocabulary. They're going to be able to have a look at the different types of language structures. And depending on what grade you teach, there are so many different and beautiful texts out there that you can use in your classroom. Now when looking at word decoding we need to have controlled text like decodable readers that use a scope and sequence and is progressional from simple to complex and decodable readers allow the students to have supported practice of understanding the decoding process as well as explicitly being taught in the different phases the letter sound correspondence knowledge that they require to become word decoders and eventually that sight recognition using those sounds that they know. So today I've introduced you to the theoretical model of the reading rope, something that will just continue to grow your understanding of how students learn to read. What I highly recommend is that you dive even deeper down into each component of the reading rope to really understand the skills and the knowledge needed to become a skilled reader. In order to do that, you need some resources and today I want to share my favorite resources with you. Firstly, we have a podcast. Now, podcasts are something that you can listen to, and I really love these because if you're a multitasker like me, you can play a podcast while you're cooking dinner or driving to work, and it really is a way to build your knowledge. So my favorite podcast, and they've released a series called Deconstructing the Reading Rope. They have experts, the experts, unpacking each component. It's made by Amplify Education. And if you have a look there, that's my um, uh, podcast connect. And that's the symbol you're looking for. It's called Amplify Education, the science of reading podcast. And there are lots of podcasts on there deconstructing each component of the reading rope. The other one is Patan. It is an American company that support the schools over there, but they've freely released their webinars on YouTube and I'll pop the links uh, in this post as well for you. So I just really encourage you to take the journey, deconstruct the reading rope because when we know better, we do better. And that way you can make sure that you're implementing the right strategies and the right resources into your classrooms.